All right. Awesome. So we are recording. Let me turn my volume up. All right. So thanks for being here, Erin. I'm glad we're doing Thank you for this. having me. Yeah. So um, I want to share with those that are watching. Um, I started doing lives with different women in not necessarily just the health industry, but women that um, I connect with and I see what they do and how it connects to health. Because what I believe is health is not just about what you put in your body. It's also how we think. It's also our, what happens within our house. It's our relationships. It's everything. And so I met Erin in a Facebook group of other um, women entrepreneurs. And uh, I think, I can't even remember now, we, but we connected. And um, she shared with what she does and all about organization and decluttering your space and decluttering up here. And I said, you know what? We should do a chat, like a 30 minute chat and talk about how what you do is completely related to the health of our mind and our body. Well, everything really. And so I wanted to invite you on so that you can share with my community. And of course, you're going to be sharing this with your community. And I believe that there's definitely going to be women out there that don't even know what you do. They're going to say, oh my gosh, I need that. I need to learn more about this. So ladies watching and men watching as well, um, really listen into how you can better your space that you live in specifically, maybe your office, maybe your bedroom. And I want you to really realize that all of that has to do with how healthy your mind and body is. All right. So Erin, why don't you just share a little bit about you and also how you got into this field? Thank you for having me. I help busy moms declutter their home and business so they have more time to spend with those they love doing what they love. And what I noticed as, as, you know, as a mom in general, or, you know, even as a, you know, human in general, what we do is we get so busy and the usual day-to-day -day tasks take so much time and energy from us that we can't focus on what we truly want to focus on. So, you know, it's, we all have 24 hours in a day. How are we going to get what we need to get done done? So being a little more organized, being a little more intentional, a little more decluttering goes a huge long way. I remember somebody first told me about, and she was an older woman that I worked with years, years ago, and her simple tip of having three clothes baskets, one for light clothes, one for dark clothes, and one for whites. And you don't separate your clothes, you separate your clothes the second you take them off and put them in the hamper. That way you don't have the whole clothes basket on the floor, the piles all over the floor, taking up all the house. If you don't get to it that day, they all run together. You have to put them away, start all over. And I'm thinking, that's genius. It's something little that we do every day that can save so much time and make things you know, go really smoothly. So that's what I loved. And then of course, you know, I noticed with clutter, clutter builds, builds up in your house, it causes so many negative emotions. And mostly women tend to associate a cluttered house with I'm not good enough. I'm not a good wife. I'm not a good mother. I should be better. And it's amazing how that can be internalized to things that don't even necessarily relate. You know, you can be busy and cluttered and be a fantastic human being, mother, wife, whatever. And but that's not how we associate things with. We just look at our house and say, oh my gosh, look at this. But what I also noticed too is every time you see clutter, your brain is constantly thinking and it's what do I need to do? You always feel like there's something that has to be done. So you're never at that peaceful place of rest of ha, ah, that relaxation, self-care mm -hmm. that you need. And so just diving more into clutter and how it affects our day-to-day -day lives and even it can cause us to gain weight. I'm like, how is that even humanly possible? But it's just the stress and the emotions of, I have to do this. This is making me focus. This is taking my attention away from various things. And it also affects our sleep. It just amazes me. Wow. 
You know what? I'm going to interject there because just, you know, that it affects our sleep, that it affects our stress levels. Like that's one of the things that jumped out at me because I talk a lot about, you know, um, you know, I, I talk a lot about metabolism. Women that come to me want to improve their metabolism. Women that are in their 40 plus want to feel better in their bodies. They want to age well. And metabolism is a big thing. And it's related to everything that's going on in our body, right? And sleep is a big part of that. Stress is a big part of that. And when we're stressed, people think that, you know, stress is just related to maybe, I don't know, all the things that we have to deal with. But what I think women don't realize, because I've asked women this before, and I've had women say, really, is that because I've talked about this before, in my community is when you have stuff everywhere, that that is actually, we know this to be true, it's actually elevating cortisol levels in your body. And cortisol is that stress hormone, right? That's the hormone that is released when our body is in fight or flight. And stress, that stress hormone is there to protect us. And stress is good to some degree. However, when we have clutter everywhere, or when we can't organize ourselves, like our kitchen is a mess. Like uh, one uh, mentor that I follow, she actually has a, well, not, I don't know if I would say it's a program, but kind of sort of like a program where, or a challenge where she actually has it's called Good Night Kitchen. And she actually basically teaches people, there's a lot to it, but um, the gist of it is how you can prepare your kitchen to go to sleep at night when you do. So when you wake up in the morning, you come into a kitchen and your kitchen is spotless or it's everything has its place. Because when you come into your kitchen in the morning and stuff is everywhere, I don't know about you, but I know that when the dishes haven't done, been done the night before and every, nothing's in its place and it's just a mess, I get up in the morning and I feel like I cannot start the day powerfully. And I know maybe some of you listening are thinking, really? <laughs> like, I don't feel like this, but, <laughs> but what I really want Aaron to sh teach us or to talk about or to educate us around is how that actually happens in the body. Because I know probably some women are listening going, well, how is it when you're cluttered or disorganized, things don't have their place? Like, how is it that it has that effect within our body? Yes, we know it increases stress, but maybe Erin, you can, can you explain like how, what happens physiologically when things don't have their place, otherwise known as clutter and things everywhere. Like, for example, do you open your car door and things just fall out? Do you go into your room, like my daughter, my, one of my daughter's rooms, and you open the door and you can't even see the carpet, no matter how big the room is, because, and I'll get you, I'll get to you in a second, Erin, because now I'm going on again, but it doesn't <laughs> matter. You know, what happens is, is, you know, I know my daughter would say, well, you know, my room is too small. I don't have enough closet space. I don't have enough place to put things. And I said to her, but you know what? It's not even about that. It's about how can you keep your space tidy? How can you train yourself or learn how to keep your space tidy in the small space that you have so that when you get a bigger space, all of what's going on inside of you doesn't come with you and it's just the same. So what's happened is we moved and her room got bigger when we moved. Guess what her room looks like? It looks, Erin, it looks exactly like it did in the smaller room. And I said, look, honey, didn't you say that in the smaller room? So anyways, I guess what I want really what you'd explain, and I want women to realize that it's not about getting a bigger house, a bigger car, a cleaner car. It's about learning how we can take care of what we have right now so that we can actually show, you know, the universe for God or show that we're able to handle what we have now so that we can actually take on more down the road, if that makes sense. So can you maybe explain what happens within us that we, and how we can shift that? Well, I, to I totally love that. And yes, I can definitely relate to your daughter because my mm -hmm. thought process for a while is our house is just too small. We'll move to a bigger house and everything will be perfect. Well, we moved to a bigger house and the house was full 
And we even like things that were in our smaller house, we couldn't even put in our bigger house because I felt still cluttered and closed in. Hmm. So it's just, we see clutter, we feel clashed, not we, but some of us, I do, I know. I get a claustrophobic feeling of, oh my gosh, look at all this I have to do. Look what needs to get done. What can I do? So it's really about systems and asking yourself, is this something I truly need or is this something I want? Cause like mm -hmm. people will go and buy, you know, you go shopping, you like that shirt, you buy it, but do yeah. you like it or do you need to have it? Mm -hmm. You know, is that wonderful, great shirt being stuffed in a closet? So you find it six months later with the tag still on it because you had to have it and it was great, but yet you've never worn it. Yes. And so it just, to me, like cl the closet was the first place I started. I don't know why, where, what, but I wanted, to, I was tired of going to the closet and never having anything to wear. And that was my mindset of, I hate all my clothes. Nothing looks good. Nothing fits. Everything's too small, too big, you know? So I woke up in the morning feeling like already I was less than already low self-esteem. I can't conquer mm. the day because I can't even choose what to put on my body. So immediately negative self-talk is setting in immediately if I'm met with a wonderful opportunity, I'm gonna probably take a side away from that because I'm not feeling mm -hmm. my confident best self. Yes. Cause I just, mm -hmm. you know, negatively attacked myself in the closet based on the emotions and what was running through my head. So I finally said, that's it. So I got rid of all the clothes that didn't fit. Anything that had a bad memory attached to it or I just didn't like the way it looked for whatever reason everything got rid of. And it was so funny because I think it was like six to eight bags of clothes I actually got rid of on that first try. Wow. wow. And I realized, oh my gosh, I have wonderful, amazing clothes that fit me perfectly. And I love, I never knew what the good clothes were surrounded by all the clothes that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. So I guess we focus on what we have more of mm -hmm. or naturally. And it's just too gratitude focusing on what we can improve on and, you know, being thankful for what we have. Yeah. But, you know, I always recommend too, when you're decluttering or going through a space, you have to do it three. I have to do it three times. So you go through it, get rid of stuff. Yeah. You go back a week or two later, you get rid of more stuff. You go back a week or two later, you get more rid of more stuff. And if you don't want to get rid of stuff, just hide it, put it in the basket, in the garage, in the basement, in the attic wherever it may be. And it was funny because my goal that year was to lose weight so that I could fit into those clothes that I didn't fit into. And within a year, I think I lost about 50 pounds having gotten rid of those clothes Wow! and just focusing and being appreciative, being grateful, knowing who I was and being confident about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Confidence is such a big thing. And, um, you know, it's kind of like, okay, well, what comes first, the egg or how does it go? The egg or the chicken, right? Yes. It's like, well, I need to release weight so that I will be confident. But what if we were released weight in the form of stuff that really doesn't bring us joy, right? Because, you know, there's so many ways, so many places we can go, so many roads we can go with this conversation because, you know, our emotions are that we're sending out are creating a vibration that is creating either we feel good or we don't like for example I think about my plants that I have and you know for me everything it's always about more plants more plants more plants in the form of essential oils more plants in the form of my tower garden what I eat more plants in the form of my whole food capsules that I eat more plants that I breathe into my you know breathe in because they're cleaning the air like the one behind me kind of thing so though they make me feel good right if you walk into your closet or into your kitchen. This is why I believe moving is amazing because when you move, especially downsizing, when you move, you, well, I mean, I guess it's maybe only downsizing, but still when you're moving, most people are feeling like they're starting fresh. So what do we want to get rid of? Like, for example, we moved and we sold so much stuff. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. We had furniture, we had stuff. I'm, I've never had a cluttered house because I just, I, I don't like living that way. And so I like my house to look a certain way. So I didn't have clutter, but oh my gosh, like my, 
my, I have a lot of books. <laughs> I, I like books and I like health books. And so I had, I even got rid of, I was able to part with some of my health books and, and then, you know, part with even more clothes that I really had for years that I really never wore. Right. Like if you think about, if you haven't worn something for, you know, three years, some might say maybe one year, if you haven't worn something and you're just keeping it just in case, then it's maybe it needs to go right. So going into your closet and asking, does it bring me joy? Like the Marie Con Condor, Marie Condor, mm -hmm. I think it is her book there. Um, she talks about, you know, if this doesn't bring you joy, then get rid of it because we want to get into that vibration because when we have an elevated vibration, because we're all energy and everything is energy. And so when we have an elevated vibration, we are going to be vibing at a different place which is why we attract certain people, certain people into our lives. And this is why we attract, you know, good opportunities and maybe even not so good opportunities, right? right? It's our vibration. So with what you're teaching and what you're talking about, it's, it is just talking about the, the pathway of vibration. When we organize and declutter, it's going to help elevate our vibration because we feel lighter. And then when we talk about weight, you said that you dropped, you know, X amount of pounds, but it wasn't even from doing the typical stuff that we know to do, like the eating and the exercise and all the things, right? It's, you got into a totally different emotional vibrational space. And I think that that's what a lot of the time we're missing is you can be eating really well and you can be moving. And yeah, there are two pieces of that holistic part puzzle but if your vibration and if you're miserable and unhappy and you're moping around all the time that is going to have a greater impact on you know you not seeing the results even though you're doing all the right things because your vibration is low so I think that decluttering and organization I think that every spring and every fall or maybe it's just well there I believe there's if, even if it's two times a year, there's always stuff we can throw out um, because, Absolutely. you know, the, and the more counter space that you have in your kitchen. So the house we sold about four years ago, the kitchen was quite large and there was a lot of counter space. Oh my gosh, Erin. It was like, there's this one counter space that always people had to put papers on it. I'm like, I can't handle this or my island. It was like, it was just like a big island, but everyone, like you would not believe people just leave stuff on it. People, my family would just leave stuff on it. Kids, you know, when they're small, they bring home a lot of paper, right? From all their artwork. So what we did was we actually, you cannot save all of the artwork because there's endless amounts, but I would look through the artwork and I would look at what I definitely, I need to keep this and definitely need to keep that. And and then I would actually put it in either a box or put it in something like a, a folder, whatever it was for each child. And then I would get rid of it because I'm talking stacks of paper. And I would say, you know, with the child, okay, whatever one it was of my kids, I would say, okay, this is what we're going to keep. And honestly, I don't remember all this much that we got gave away. I don't even remember what that was, but the, the few that I have when I, we go through that, that's memorable, right? So yeah, it's, um, it's so, so key when we're talking about managing weight, right? And that goes in hand, hand in hand with balancing your hormones, because going back to that stress talk again, is we don't realize how much in our day to day is creating stress in our body, where a body thinks that we have to, you know, fight, and we have to attack, right? Like it's like driving in traffic that elevates our cortisol levels and elevates our stress hormones. Um, not eating properly, exercising too much. I've worked with women that they exercise a lot and they start to cut that down and balance things out. I'm telling you, Erin, it drops because that's stress on the body, right? So it's all about a balance. In my opinion, everything is about simplicity. How can you make this simpler, which you've given great tips, right? On how to make it simpler. And if, I mean, I guess you would say if you have a house that is just, because there's some people that are hoarders, right? You watch TV shows and it's crazy what comes out of their house. 
And even if they've lived in a house for like 50 years, it's like, oh my gosh, how did, where did you put this stuff? But I think that if you just take one step at a time, just like anything, you know, start with one room, like the closet you were saying, go to the closet. And then the next, when you're feeling like you can just breathe again, then you go now to the kitchen and look at, you know, do you need 50 glasses to drink out of, right? Do you need like all these different dish sets? Like, you know, so how can you just minimize and take what you need, right? I had a friend actually, she, I'm not kidding you. Okay, you ready for this? When she told me this, I almost fell on the ground because we were outside of her house. So I didn't have a chair. She had, I think it was 49 pairs of jeans with tags on. And she admitted to me, I was like, you have how many pairs of jeans? And she, she admitted to me the reason she had all of those jeans is because she was not happy and she was looking outside of herself and looking for ways to fill that void and fill that gap. So would you agree, Erin, that a lot of people could also, um, their house can become cluttered and disorganized because of, you know, maybe there's a, a gap missing somewhere? possibly? Absolutely. Um, without a doubt, because we look for, I mean, what do we do? We look for material things to make us happy. Mm. I'm not happy. I'm not this. But if I buy those pair of jeans, those jeans can make me happy. Yes. And then they sit there, you know, uncluttered or cluttered, and they sit there with the tags on and you're still not happy. And not only are you not happy, I mean, 49 pairs of jeans, that would be great, but that's over a month and a half almost to wear those once, you know, if you wear one pair a day, how yeah. often are you going to experience the joy from the pants when you have so many more of those? Yeah. So, you know what I just heard actually, Erin, when you said experience the joy. So really, I wonder how much then joy is, or a lack of joy is coming from the clutter and disorganization right absolutely because you know what are you're just sitting there looking at stuff and when you, and i'm not saying to i'm not saying just get rid of everything eliminate everything because you know maybe there is somebody out there that needs 49 pairs of jeans and that makes them happy so that's great but know what your life is and know, you know, know what you need to make you happy and know what you're truly like utilizing and what's important. Like I have a million books. It's really hard for me to get rid of the books because I like them, but you know, when you need space, sometimes you go through and you pick out the books and you get rid of six books a year. And then maybe, you know, a year later, you get rid of 10 more despite the fact that you bought 15 in that year, but still you guys yeah. get my idea. Yes. yes. Um, but do things that, you know, are going to bring you joy, that are going to make you happy. And it's very important too, when you start decluttering or getting rid of stuff, you stick to an area. So like you complete the entire closet or you complete a section of the kitchen mm. because mm -hmm. I don't know if I, I let my squirrely brain go some days and it's like, you say you're gonna clean the house, but you really didn't clean the house because every time you go to a room, You've done something there, but you can't experience that. Oh my gosh, this looks good. This looks clean. This is my work and this is my accomplishment. Yeah. And so stick to an area. I always say to start with the area that drives you crazy or causes the most negative emotions. Mm. So it could be something as little as like a drawer in the bathroom or a drawer in the kitchen. Start small, start simple, and just build on that because momentum will pick you up and take you. And that's true for everything, right? When people talk about, you know, a health journey, like just do something, right? Because otherwise we don't do anything, right? And then that overwhelm takes over and, it, and then you just don't get anywhere. So one of the books, speaking of books that I love if you have not read this book, Erin, and those of you listening, this is a must. It's not for any, it's for every area of your life. It's called The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. It is amazing. One of the all-time best personal growth books. I guess it's personal growth. 
it's called the slight edge. So basically what that means is he talks about the small, simple things that you do every single day, either take you basically take you closer to your goal or take you further away. Right. So if you want to feel like he talks about how if you eat a hamburger, you go to, I don't know, any fast food restaurant and you eat a hamburger and you eat a hamburger once a year, nothing will change. If you eat it every month, you know, okay, maybe a little bit, but if you eat it every week versus every single day, there's going to be a difference, right? It's the small thing. So you don't notice if you're eating a hamburger every single week or every day, we'll say, you don't really notice much, we'll say after a week, but then after two weeks and then after three weeks and four weeks and multiply, 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 guess what happens? You notice that hamburger is on you, right? And all the places inside and out. And it's the same thing. If, you know, we talk about, um, you know, January coming. And so my, I've been in the fitness industry for many years and we always say that, um, you know, New Year's resolutions, the biggest thing, the number one thing we all know this is where people say we're going to get healthy. And so that could mean working out more or people are saying, I'm going to get back to the gym. And we all know, I would know my classes would be packed in January and usually by February, it's dying down. Usually after two weeks, it's dying down, but we'll give it a month. And then it goes, 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 right? So the thing is, is that people will do it. So they go, they don't see a result because it's not quick enough because we live in this microwave society. It's not quick enough. So what we do is we just quit because we're not seeing the results, but we don't understand that the results don't come in just like, you know, two weeks, or even when I have take um, women through detoxes, you know, they, they see results, some people not as quick as others, everyone's different, but it's, that's why it's about a lifestyle. So if you can taking that slight edge talk here, if you can put the slight edge and the lifestyle focus, because I talk about lifestyle a lot within my community and health. So with this, with, with clutter and, de- and disorganization, or decluttering and organization is look at it as a lifestyle. Start, clean out whatever you need to clean out. And then how can you keep it that way, right? How can you keep your kitchen tidy? So if you pull out all the glasses and you have 50 million glasses, how many glasses do you need? How many, if you have guests over, how many glasses do you need? And just keep what you need there. And instead of, and then asking, like you said, asking, okay, if you have a thing for glasses, you ask yourself, do I really need these glasses? Because it's going to start to, um, you know, multiply. And all of a sudden you're back with, you're back with a hundred glasses, right? I'm just using Absolutely. that as an example, right? So Absolutely. we have to focus on lifestyle. How can we keep this as a lifestyle? So what would you say in closing? What would you say um, would be um, in terms of keeping this as a lifestyle, you know, from what we just said, what, what other what other main tip that kind of jumps out at you that you would want to leave um, for us listening today? I would say it's really about a routine and daily habits that build up. And of course, daily habits take time. So whether it's, you know, setting a timer, going through a room for two minutes to tidying up, getting rid of what you don't need, or maybe it's pick up 10 things in that room, whatever style you prefer. But more like, okay, so your kids are bringing home the papers. When they bring home the papers, they go straight to a drawer in the cabinet or they go straight to a box. And then you can, you know, take them from that box or whatnot. Like with the mail, you don't come in and just set the mail down. You go straight to the garbage can and you get rid of the mail you don't want. And then you do whatever needs to be done with the other mail. You have a catch all bin on the kitchen counter. So when you come in and throw your keys and whatever else, people have in their hands everything has a designated spot yes as well and it that designated spot has to be based on your routine and just because it works for somebody else it may not work for you so don't be afraid to change things up yeah yeah I love that and I think that it's just about yeah building that habit and because neurologically we're programmed to do to just put the keys. So at our front door, we have like a little table and there's a drawer. 
So I've had to train my husband when you walk in. So if I see the keys on the counter or the keys not in the drawer, I should not see any, this is what I say in my house. I should not see any keys anywhere, any invisible sight. And so I've had to reprogram my, my family. And so if I see keys, I'll say, okay, go and like my kids go and pick it up and put it back where it's fine because found because we need to program our mind and our neural pathways. So just keep doing it over and over and over, like what you suggested with the bins and all of this, everything has its, well, everything has its place, but remember that it takes time to build a habit and it's important to just keep doing it over and over and it will just start to become automatic. And the, cl- I mean, the clutter didn't, I, I hate this, but it's so true. The problems didn't come overnight. The clutter didn't just magically drop in the house the day before. You know, depending on when the last time you moved it, maybe 10, 15 years that it accumulated, it's going to take a lot of time. Yes. So be patient yeah. with yourself. Yes. Patient and grace. Absolutely. Yep. And, and remember, no giving up. You're like, if you're like, oh, forget it. I just keep doing the, just determine, make a decision that you're just going to train yourself your neural pathways will ch- change and train. You can train yourself. You just have to do, keep doing that opposite thing. Okay. So, um, so Aaron, um, let's, uh, leave. I'm just thinking here. Um, if you have any, anything that you want to include, um, maybe in the Facebook comments, you want to leave your, um, your information. I'll do the same thing. And if there's any questions, you guys, I'm going to share this to, well, this is shared on Facebook right now and YouTube. And then if you guys want to post comments below or, you know, ask questions, anything like that, please do so. And, um, Aaron and I will both post where you can find us. And, uh, I'm glad you guys joined us. So thanks Aaron for chatting with me. All things health, even though it doesn't seem like health, (laughs) because it's all connected. Yes, thank you. Awesome. All right, everyone. We'll see you for the next Tuesday chat.